good to go, right? No, we're really ready to go. All right, let's go. Go with your intro, my man. Great. We're going to get started right now. So welcome, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. Welcome to The Hit Show, and uh, where we talk about everything mindset, lifestyle, entertainment, uh, business, and even sports uh, in our daily lives, and just uh, discuss and share what we can do to actually uh, perhaps lead better lives, um, you know, having more fruitful relationships, and just making the overall journey just a, a wonderful ride and, and provide value here on this platform uh, for those who wish to uh, to uh, join us for this ride. So thank you very much for joining. And today's topic, again, inspired by last week's question, um, and the, the, the biggest question was, what are your fears? That's what people want to hear about. And um, Rich, just let me know if my picture and sound is clear because it is actually... No, it's up. perfect. It's all good. It's all good. Perfect. And um, so we're talking about what are your fears? And of course, we're expecting there's quite a bit um, because um, you know, we, we have a lot of stuff, a lot of, a lot of baggage, uh, and um, some of which we are afraid of. Um, but I want to point out that there's something called a rational fear and an irrational fear. A rational fear, of course, is something where you're standing on the, you know, a 20 story building looking down. That's a rational fear. You know, <laughs> people can get afraid of that. Okay. But an irrational fear is perhaps something where, uh, you're afraid of, uh, maybe spiders or, um, certain situation, like a lot of uh, tight spaces or uh, crowded areas where that could be in your way and you feel that you're affected by that and it's not allowing you to live your life fully. That would be classified more of an irrational fear. So we're gonna open it up right now. So so Rich, first question is, what are you scared of? What, well, uh, before we get there, I, want, I wanted to explain what our program is because you went, you went straight into fears. So th this is the HIT program uh, and uh, HIT stands for Human Investment Technology. The most important uh, investment is you, uh, with my co-host Sam Aid, and uh, usually we have Andrea, and she might join us today. But we'll we'll um, we've got to play it by ear. She's she's out and about. She's got a, a meeting, but she's going to try and get out of it. And hopefully, she can join us. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, she might actually jump on today. So I've sent her the link. So she might get us from uh, remotely. So let's hope, fingers crossed, we can get her on. Um, to your question, what are my fears? I think we all have, I mean, uh, you know, some sort of irrational fears like what you were talking about, uh, Sam, about, you know, a rational fear is, you know, getting chased by a bear in the woods. It's rational. Irrational fears is like, you know, when something goes wrong and you think, is this the end? You know what I mean? So, um, you know, you might lose a job or um, or a client or whatever, and then you say to yourself, oh, my God, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really, you know, it, it's, it's, that's it. You know, I'm not going to get any more work or that sort of stuff. So my personal fears, I mean, um, I think probably like some some people is is, you know, the unknown and being an entrepreneur and you you're in the same sort of boat sam it, you know it can occasionally you know hit you and and go okay well where's the next income going to come from this is part of the excitement obviously this is the reason why we do it what we do to have that freedom and you know being able to let's say design your life as, as best as possible but yeah i mean that that would be my sort of thing sometimes it's like okay there's there's months where you know things work and dry up a little bit, and then you have these um, fears, but they are yeah. still irrational, if if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. And, and and when you say that they're irrational, that means it's something that we can go beyond and learn. Um, but I also want to set the tone. I mean, having some level of fear is uh, healthy, absolutely healthy. I think because it keeps us on our toes, it keeps us ready, uh, and not too relaxed. And so I think a healthy dose of, of fear, uh, if it's warranted in the right place or in the right context, it's actually important to have that and identify with it because, you know, it keeps us on our toes. I think it's the right thing to have um, that emotion. Uh, but going back to yeah. what you were saying, Rich, on, you know, 
Or when you have a job or you're an entrepreneur and you're starting a company, you know, of course, naturally the first fear is maybe, you know, where's that next piece of work going to come from? What do I do next? What if this doesn't work out? And it automatically mm -hmm. fear sets in. So if you put that, we can look at fear in two different ways. One is a debilitating way where it handicaps us. You know, we can't do anything about it. Um, yeah. It stops us there. And there's that fear where I know some people, especially in the sports world, when they have that kick of fear, that dose, it gets them excited. It gets them riled up. Like, bring it, you know. Like, I'm ready for this. I know I'm a little bit nervous. I'm scared. But, boy, you know, it gives me a, a different kind of rush. Like, i got to prove myself, you know. Yeah, see, adrenaline that, that kicks in with fear also because it's a natural state of that fight, flight, what we're talking about, freeze sort of thing that, you know, and yeah. fear and, and like even the anxiety, and that's where anxiety comes from also, which we discussed last week, I think it was. So, you know, uh, there's an automotive system that goes within the body that, that creates this adrenaline. It's, 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 it's uh, you know, uh, what's the word you call it? Um, you know, it's the reptile, uh, was it a reptile brain? Rept what do you call it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. So I'd be interested to see what, what other people have fears about. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that it'd be, you know, general sort of stuff, like, you know, fears of the unknown, fears, what's going to happen to me if this happens. And, you know, I guess what we yeah. do as coaches and try to guide people on is that getting yourself out of that state of stop focusing on what you don't want focus on what you do want because what can happen is is the more that you put yourself into the position of focusing on those fears right if it's not going to be positive for you you're going to be stuck in that place so why not focus on and put your energy instead of focusing on the negative put your energy on what you want and how to, how to make those changes and that's that's the key the key thing out of today no totally totally i also wanted to add the fact that before that rich i mean easier said than done right people could be thinking oh well focus on what you do want but what you don't want remember if it's a fear we're going to be focusing on that fear because we want to either run away from it or do something about it right because clearly something's there so i would say identify ask yourself identify feel learn um what is it that you're fearful of at this point? Because it's important to identify it first. Because the moment you make the unconscious conscious, then it eliminates. It, it, it dispels the, the level of fear uh, and it quickly identifies whether it's truly a threat on your life or it isn't. Hence making it mm. the difference between rational and irrational. So the moment you spotlight on that, uh, automatically you make the unconscious conscious and then it's like oh you know what i had this feeling but you know what on second thought I, I i don't really feel that it's you know bothering me so it's not so much of a fear you know hey i'm just gonna add andrea to the stream she's oh, joined she's us andrea thanks Hello. for joining us <laughs> it was a bit of a wasn't okay. sure if you're gonna join us today but thanks for joining us Last appointment took a couple of hours. You can never predict how hospitals would be will be with plaster and stuff. So yes, I'm here and I'm I'm excited. I was a bit uh, miffed when I realised that my appointment might run into this. So thanks for having well, me. Well, <laughs> I'm I'm glad you joined us. Really, really glad that you joined us. And ho hopefully your daughter's okay. So plaster's all off. And yeah, did she have any off. fears? Well, yeah, interesting enough, uh, she did. The Like the little uh, drill thing that they cut the plaster off with, she saw that in yeah. action when she was having her plaster put on. So, uh, so yeah, she was a bit nervous. We use essential oils here because I'm all about, you know, all about the oils. So she had a yeah. couple of those and create that anchor. I think we've sort of touched on that maybe a little bit in some of our other calls in terms of, yeah. you know, creating an anchor. So, yeah, she did, she did super. So... But yeah, bring me up to speed. How are we going? Where where are we at? <laughs> well, we did. We just did the intro and and said that you might be joining, and glad that you joined. And we we're just talking about fears and irrational fears, and you know, like if you're getting chased by a bear in the woods, that's a, that's a rational fear. And um, uh, but you know, like having a a fear. Oh, is this going to happen? Like you know, sometimes we we can we can 
you know, someone can lose their job or not knowing where the next income is going to come in. Now, I'm not saying it's not, it's, it's irrational if you, if you think in the moment that's, that's it, it's done. Am I never going to find a job again? Or, you know, do you know what I mean? Where you mm. know that through experience that, you know, if you, if you focus on what you want with, with not focusing on what you don't want, things will happen again. Doors open, but you've got to be in that state of mind. So I don't know, you'd be from your yourself. I'm sure that you've dealt with so many people that have different types of fears. Yeah. And yeah. I, I guess that in terms of what you're talking about, like the bear in the woods and stuff, like there's, you know, there's really those fears that are pointed towards our security and mm. what, is, what is endangering our, our security. And I guess it's that being able to tap into what do we believe creates security in terms of that. So, you know, income and being able to feed your family, like that, that's, like that security, like that's really important to us. And, and when that feels like it might be threatened, then I guess that's where our response system comes in, isn't it? But other things I, that, yeah, go, yeah, go. No, I was saying, and I guess that's what you do, you know, pretty well is that you, you know, you help people get into that safe, safe place. Because the fear, you know, to be in a safe place, that, that, that sort of like reduces the fear doesn't it? Or the stress? Well, I, th I think it helps us to make conscious, conscious decisions yeah. and choices. And there's a difference between conscious and unconscious. And reacting to situations is realistically an, on an unconscious thing where we might be just on automatic pilot. Whereas to become conscious is to be very present on the choices we're making, the thoughts that we're having, the you know the action that we need to take and why we're taking it I guess because you know going back to that like losing a job and the income and feeding our family yeah. you know to me there would be still that underlining connection to our identity yeah and you know that's a fear in itself when our identity is threatened like who am I now like if I if I don't provide for my family you know have I failed them if I don't uh, do this or do that, like what will people think? And so I think there's a there's a realistic, you know, survival mechanism in there, absolutely, but also that yeah. emotional connection and being able to differentiate, help people differentiate between is this fear based on needing to feel connected and a part of our tribe and acceptance and, and knowing who we are and being okay in our own skin or is this literally a threat of not being able to survive like a bear in the woods mm. if a bear's coming for you you don't give it rats whether people think that climbing a tree is the best option you just do what you got to do but yeah, when we course. get into the social phenomena of uh those threats and and a lot of people's fears i think has an underlining uh connection to will i be accepted how will i be viewed what does this mean about me and i guess that's what i that's the safety that I love to create is, you know, well, let's get into that. Let's see what's true here. Love it. Sam, you would have dealt with a lot of clients that with fear. Maybe you can give us some sort of like examples from, from you know, how you've, some stories without naming the names yeah. and and how you've helped helped the people, um, you know, with, with sort of like rational fears. Yeah. Hey, Andrea, how are you today? Yeah, good. How are you, Sam? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Good. Um, yeah, on the topic of fear, I mean, I think going back to I mean, something that Andrea triggered, it's the fear of I was this person, I'm a provider, perhaps, or you have that, you know, um, designation, uh, or you've, you know, applied a, a designation on yourself. Like, are you a parent? Are you a leader at work? Are you a manager, a head of a department, something? And I think when you connect, uh, we connect ourselves with that. We feel the need to, you know, uh, operate as a leader. And so therefore it puts some level of fear on us. And so the people that I see uh, are executives. Uh, they are leaders, heads of departments, uh, some cases CFOs and CEOs. And they are working on a narrative 
where they have to always lead, like they're always on. <laughs> so the level of fear is constantly there to some form or, or, or another. And it, it has a lot to do, believe it or not, with being able to make better choices, better decisions, um, and, and stepping outside of yourself, so to speak. Uh, so, so confidence is, keeps creeping up. When I see people, it's, it's a lack of confidence, but then you'll find they've put themselves in a position that has a you know, high level of responsibility that they just can't sustain for so long. It's, it's almost like a sports marathon. You know, If you're running a marathon, there are those that can run a 10-mile, 20-mile, 30-mile marathon because they trained for that level of endurance. And same thing in the business world. I feel that people are in certain positions that are mini marathons. Are you, are you ready for that type of <laughs> job or that responsibility? And so a high dose of fear can definitely hit you when um, you thought it was a piece of cake, but it really required much, much more from you uh, in terms of time, commitment, dedication. So that's what I would think fear, fear uh, is applied to as well in, in many cases. Hey, um, just a thing, a, a big hello to the crew that uh, that are jumping in and a uh, big hello to John Allen from Perth and Lana, Chris Beach, a couple of the guys that are usual and, and watch us. Appreciate you guys uh, jumping uh, on and please send in the comments um, if what type of fears you have or if there's something that we can help on today. Um, you know, we can, we can discuss that for sure. Um, I think the other thing is, especially with what's happening with COVID and, and, and it's, a, it's a topic that, you know, everyone's facing at the moment. When you have things that are out of your control, you know, oh, there's going to be a world war. This, these are macro environmental things that are completely out of your control. Yet some people will take it to heart and they'll really have fear. I mean, it's obvious when you see someone in the street, whether they're wearing, a, you know, a mask, but then they've got a full shield. You know, oh, I might get COVID. I, I'm scared, you know. This is what I'm talking about. You know, not only just like unconscious fear, but, you know, I've dealt with people that have been scared to, fly, uh, you know, hop on a plane, um, scared to, to, to meet another person because they have a fear. There's a whole bunch of different types of fears, but what it tends to be is the narrative that you have in your brain. And it's usually based on trauma. So some sort of trauma that's happened before. So like, for example, someone that's scared to fly on a plane, well, they might've had turbulence or they've watched a movie or something's resonated with them that they've got so scared that they don't want to do it because I want to feel the pain or potential pain. So this is the interesting topic. So, um, yeah. Can I just jump in as well? John Allen's yeah, question. Sure. I want to pop it up and I want to reply to it. John says, can you provide an example of each of where fear should A, be overcome or B, be embraced in the professional world? So, great question, Johnny Allen. Great He's question. A star. Yeah. And my, my answer to that really would be is communicate. Communicate. There are a lot of bosses or leaders that keep themselves, they isolate, they self-isolate, and they love to do a lot of mind reading. They love to think that, oh, she should understand that or he should know what to do in that situation. And mind reading is the worst way to put yourself in a, in a, you know, in a, in a hairy situation. It's, it, we don't know what the other person is thinking, okay? And so when we don't know the unknowns, we become fearful and fear sets in. And then over time, that fear can grow uh, and get amplified. So I would say communicate reach out, create forums, um, create frequent status meetings. And they could be as short as five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever. It's just, hey, how's it going? Um, how that weekend? What do you have on the list? What's the agenda? What do we need to complete this week? Stuff like that. Because the more we communicate, the more we know each other and where they're coming from, the better you know, or less fearful we become. So that's what I wanted to well, share. What about, what about the embracing? You, can, is there an example where you, there's a fear you can embrace? Maybe, maybe um, you, well, you guys both can. Listen, I think I, I'm going to leave that one to Andrea, actually. The embracing type. We always give the hard <laughs> questions, hard <laughs> questions to Andrea. Go ahead, Andrea. Give us a, 
How um, about the Johnny Boy? Okay, I, okay. I, I always, I feel like I always take it in a different direction. But anyway, let's go with that. Okay. I, I, I don't know whether it's actually the fear that needs to be overcome or embraced, or recognizing what the story behind the fear is that needs mm. to be you know, dismissed as in is that true or is it not or embraced of, oh, okay, and let's move with it because the fear is connected to a story that we're telling ourselves about a certain situation. Yeah. And until we can actually communicate, I love communicate, Sam, because that is, you know, that's essential, but the, the process needs to start with ourselves. The communication of, well, what does it mean? Like you use that example then of, of, a, of a staff member and, you know, trying to mind read and stuff. So, you know, what story are we creating about that person and, and, and who we are as a leader based on what is or isn't happening? And so until you can actually get to the core of what we're making it mean and whether that's true or not, you're not going to know whether you need to overcome it or embrace it. And personally for me, that's an individual thing. Now, I obviously work with individuals where you, you guys tend to, you know, work with uh, businesses and stuff like that. So, you know, mm. people might look at that and go, well, you know, where it's a company, it's a business, it's executives, like this is a team. We, like you've you got to work out whether you're going to overcome that or embrace that. But I am a firm believer that it's part, part, whole. And every person makes up a part of that company, that business, that team. And to be whole, people need to be able to be, have an introspective look at the fear and the story that they're attaching to it. To be able to decide for themselves, is this something I need to overcome? Like, is this something that is not true? Or is this something I need to be able to embrace and recognise why it's here, what I can learn from it and how I can utilise that? To, to create a better connection, better communication, better outcomes, whatever it is that, you know, the you're trying to break through, I guess. Hey, I don't know if you guys know, um, but do you know that the, the, the biggest fear, uh, it's a, a statistic I read somewhere, it might have come from Jerry Seinfeld. Who knows? But, uh, but <laughs> I, I'm Bart sure that Jerry. No, no, I'm pretty sure it was Jerry Seinfeld said it. He said that the the biggest fear outside of people, you know, scared to die, is public speaking. So I don't know if you guys know about that or heard that before. And that's that's a simple thing, right? For for people like us, we're we're jumping online now. I mean, or or you know, I've yeah. fortunate enough to have a DJ background while. I'd, Pick up the mic and talk talk to uh, to an audience, but because so it's, I, it's, it's a ref yeah, go ahead. So yeah, I was, I'll, I'll pose something. Is it the fear of public speaking, or how your speaking will be received by the public? Well, that's 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 the second, the latter. Yeah, of course. Hmm. What will happen yeah. if I get it wrong? What will I happen? <laughs> you know, if people don't agree, what happens if I stutter? Like, it all comes back to the fear of what, how will I be received? And uh, that to do with pain or, or how would I be looked at? Like what you're saying, you know, like mm. I've dealt with people that have had stutters or a particular thing is it's how would I be looked upon within society or through my friends or with the family? Which is the, or, you, know, you know, that's our identity, isn't it? Like, yeah, absolutely. You know, or being embarrassed of a situation or, or whatever. We've got a few questions here also. Uh, I want to, guys, if you've got comments, um, we, we can actually show you uh, ways that we, I mean, Sam, Sam's got some uh, particular strategies of how to overcome fears uh, that we deal with different clients, same as you, uh, Andrea. If anyone's got some questions in there, I think there's a question from Johnny also here. What was he saying here? You can hold Andrea's beer. Seriously, wonderful interpretation to my query. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Which is nice. <laughs> I would love to be able to drink beer. People told me when I was younger that you just keep drinking it, you'll get used to it. Can't do it. Can't do it, huh? Oh. Can I just, before we move into that, though? Yes. I, I, it feels really strange now as a nearly 43-year-old to admit this, but I was 27 before I actually was introduced to the 
the truth or, or, or this belief that I always felt like my thoughts were just thoughts, that I had no control over those. So, like, I just want to actually put it out there that do people actually even know that they have a choice here of what they think, how to reframe it? Like, I was afraid of the dark. Like, this is how it came up. I was afraid of the dark at 27, newly widowed, two little kids, and it was literally debilitating because I had to learn to live in this darkness on my own. Yeah. And I went to a counsellor. I went to, I had some counselling and, and she wanted to help me work through whatever I needed to work through. And I said, this whole fear of the dark, like it, it's literally, it's hard enough to be grieving, but this is just frightening. I don't know what to do with it. And she just said, just think a different thought, as if I should know that. <laughs> like, like I, I, I absolutely really honestly believe that there are, you know, I'm a prime candidate and I guess I'm posing that out there in terms of people that maybe haven't realised that. I think we come into this realisation at different times, but can we embrace that we absolutely have a choice in what we're thinking that does create these fears. I might did be the only person that? on the planet that didn't know this, but I didn't know it. And the empowering position that puts you in to go, I, I didn't have to think like this. And it might take work to be able to reframe it and, and restructure it and, and work through it and embrace it or reject it, whatever. But the, the power can I of the Can I tell you, and then Sam, uh, there's a question there. We want you to answer for Dave, but I've dealt with kids, some kids that have had fear of the dark, uh, just just general fears uh, in general. And um, what I've noticed, and even with some doing with adults, when you go childlike, and I'm sure Sam, you've done it, you know, with childlike, all right, let's get that fear, let's put it into a ball, and then let's throw it away. It's little things like this, just storytelling. The fear goes, you know, when you've got someone that's absolutely willing to, to, to make the change and they're desperate for the change and you, you create a different story of what you're saying and like, let it see it for what they are, what it is like, okay, is there anyone in the dark? Is, is anyone going to hurt you? So give me more. And we, we call this, what is it, um, Sam? It's a strategy. I think it is, um, you know, when someone's got a fear of a cat or, or a dog or whatever, mm -hmm. and, and you get them to tell them the story and, and, and then you make it even more silly as a story. And then their unconscious mind goes, oh, that's silly. And then it goes. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. Sam, you've had that experience, haven't you? Yeah, I think there's been, well, there's different ways, eh? There's different techniques. There's different models from the world of NLP and, and um, New Code by John Grinder on um, disassociating from the event. There's so many different yeah, ways we look at it. Um, so we, we don't want to kind of geek out on, on, on those particularly, but I just want to jump on, um, how does Dave overcome his fear? Let me just post the question up, of, of getting into the market instead of just watching it. That's a great question because it applies to different, different scenarios. Um, and first I would say I read I read somewhere where that your uh, your progress is is the process, and and so getting involved slowly uh, and what slow means to you is really the ticket. Getting out there slowly, like everyone has their own ways and versions of including themselves, participating. So what I would what I would suggest is try participating into these exercises, these events whatever the market job you need to do, whatever that is for you, start participating, perhaps even start conversations around what you want to do instead of just watching it, but participate slowly. And everyone has their own rate and speed of doing that. Um, that that's what I would say right off the bat, okay? Uh, because your process is where you'll find your progress. And so once you, it's, it's almost like stepping into the pool pool is really cold you put in your toe in you know, at the beginning and it's like hold on let me just check this out first mm -hmm. and then Good slowly, slowly you, you dip in you slowly dip in and then you'll later find very soon actually that it was uh, totally okay
totally okay. And you look back and it's like, you know what? <laughs> I wonder why I did that <laughs> to, to begin. But we all have these, you know, uh, approaches. And so I would say, trust that process because the process is your progress. And uh, you can grow, grow through there. Can I just say, uh, Sam, in addition to that and the progress, and I love the metaphor of the pool and stuff like that. It's, it's great. In Dave's case, I think further to that is we've got to work out what the root cause of the fear is, right? One is dipping it in and going in slowly, etc. Now, if do you understand what the actual root cause is? What's causing the fear? Am I fearing I'm going to lose money, right? Do I have the money to invest into the market? And, and if, if it goes all sour, what's going to happen? So these are the sort of things that when you when you cut into it, like if he says, okay, you know what, I've got two thousand dollars, and if that goes, it goes, right? I'm not worried about it. Then it's a different story. But if 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 you don't have that money to play with, then you know that's. But you're getting pushed unconsciously. For example, I need to prove myself to get into the marketplace. Then I can understand. Where that fear would yeah. come in and then the question is you don't either you got it it's got to come with a decision either you do it or you don't do it rich i also want to add yes. please uh, well i mean we have to make a disclaimer here like we're not doctors psychologists or psychoanalysts or anyone from the medical world we're coaches uh we've learned some some, some tips and techniques uh on, from the world of neuroscience on how this thing can be solved like you rightly said rich i mean we can always go to root cause but I, we can't at all do any mind reading. We don't know where you're coming from. We don't know what your upbringing was. We don't know a bunch of, there's a lot of unknowns we don't know. So we try to keep the conversation, you know, as conversational as possible. And of course, for people who really, really want to actually work on this and sort it out, and fix it, you know, you could reach out that, you know, where to find us, you know, that's really what this, this idea is about. We're, we're having some conversations, perhaps sharing some tips here and there, but we have to, you know, put it out there that we don't know. Everyone's leading a journey we know nothing about. And so we don't want yeah. to claim that we know exactly where you're coming from and it's all fine and dandy, you know? No, we're living through a challenge globally. And that's fact, you know? And so uh, the tides are turning. Some people are embracing it while a whole bunch of others aren't, you know, simply, you know, they're just resisting a lot of tension. So, um, like you rightly said, Rich, the root cause is really where you change things almost for good. Um, and we do that. But the question is right here, you know, what, what steps can we take at least to go into the right direction and point you in the right direction? So I yeah, just to share. exactly. And then the other thing is, I mean, you know, if we go into the football terms of things like, um, you know, someone, someone's got a fear of, you know, uh, when they when they're kicking for goal or or those types of things or fear of going in into the packs, right? Usually, if if you look at that, it's because of a past experience where they've made a failure. It's affected them. They created a narrative in their in their brain, right? So then, when they're in that that position, that are, it, we're all how can I explain it? Everything's pleasure and pain, so we're all trying to avoid pain. You know what I mean? I don't know what you think there, Andrea, on that, but um, you know, this is what I think. I think we're we're all we're all looking for pleasure. Sometimes you gotta you gotta endure the pain. It's like what we rightly said to to John Allen before. You know, where you gotta embrace it and go, okay, I gotta deal with this to to, to grow. But sometimes it's just irrational. You know, I'm uh, you know I'm not gonna go into the pack because um, you know and, and get the and get what's that irrational. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. Irrational. Sorry. So, sure. so anyway, so that's what I wanted to say. I'm, I'm interested to see if there's any other comments. Big hello to Rob, also that's joining us. He says, um, "Great show," and hello to Lana and Gina and Rocco. Rocco's here again. So, um, great to have you guys on. So, I think what we're going to do is we're going to keep on going for about another five, five or so minutes. Nice comment from John Allen. And then we'll, let's talk about um, the next topic for next week. If you've got ideas for next week, hopefully people have enjoyed this. But um, I, I'm interested to see if anyone's got some comments or they want they want to work on something particularly, whether they have a fear, and then maybe, maybe we can give some advice from the three of us. 
Andrea? Yeah, okay. I'm just going to follow up on terms of the whole, you know, the answers and the support and stuff like that. I am a massive advocate for, and, and everybody has their own opinion, but I don't have anybody's answers. So in terms of what I hold dear and what I believe is that we actually all know the answers within ourselves and it's a journey to be able to discover those and to be able to see those and to be able to like I can I can intuitively feel what's going on for people and I and I know that you guys are the same that you can sometimes you can see stuff that people can't see but that doesn't necessarily mean that's that's for me to point that out for you it's I'm here to guide you into your in, in, within yourself to get to those answers because, because for me anything else can be somewhat of a band-aid fix. If it doesn't come from you, it's probably not going to stick. And I feel like that's what we're here for is to literally support people into what is the truth behind this fear? Like let's really like break it open. Like, okay, yes, this is what is on the surface. Like I can see Gina saying there that, you know, she's not been on a plane because of fear of heights. Okay, I'll guarantee it's not a fear of a height possibly. I think there'd be something under that, like what's underneath that and where's the layers and, and, and going back into that. But for Gina to make her peace with going on a plane or not going on a plane is not going to come from anybody else but her and there can you know the the tools and the processes that that we have on board that we know are empowering is what we share but the breakthrough will always come from us finding peace within ourselves like you're saying pleasure and pain i don't mm -hmm. for me it's it, it's peace or pain because pleasure doesn't stick and doesn't stay but we can have peace even when everything outside of us is a complete shitstorm. We can still have peace in that. We can still have that acceptance of might not be what I want it to be right now, but it is what it is and I'll make my peace with that, which has been challenging for me. Lately. Thing, it's the same thing for Dave with the market. I think like this, this applies, like what you're saying about with Gina with, with the plane. It's the same thing. Yeah, and it's really it's that... Possible you know that giving yourself permission really to to have that conversation with yourself like let's get really honest here what do i fear really if i get into the market okay what what what, what makes me nervous about that but, and talk to yourself like it's much easier with someone supporting you because you can pose some questions that maybe we don't necessarily think of because we're in it you know that's the beauty of us is that we we're, we're that, you know, we're removed for, so you don't have that emotional connection to the situation, which, Correct. you know, you can get a different perspective from that from that viewpoint, I guess. Very interesting. Yeah. I'm over now. <laughs> Sam, what do you think? <laughs> Sam, go <laughs> for it, Sam. And then let's, let's move to the next topic for next week. Yeah, we're going to wrap up almost soon. So, I mean, we talked about fear. Um, it's a broad topic it's really broad uh, and i think we're unanimous in, in agreeing that th there's a lot of stuff or unresolved perhaps to some degree um emotions that we need to resolve but it all starts from within um embracing accepting that first is is a key at least first step to you know working on that if it means a lot to you but i but i also have to say that, that a nice little dose of fear is, is always is always good. I, I feel that all these emotions that we feel are there for a reason. Like there's a, a reason I'm feeling anxious or fearful or sad or happy or joyful, whatever it is. If I'm able to actually feel that and experience it, then surely it has some sort of role to play in my life to some degree. Okay, that's the way I see it. So if if something scares me, and it's rational, like a, a bear or, or someone, you know, running after me with a knife or a gun. Obviously, I need to move. But if something is um, that that is scaring me, that it's not scaring other people, then it just has me to question myself. That's all. It's like, hmm, maybe I can work on that. I wonder where that's coming from. That's all. But I think a certain level of all these emotions, um, 
are the soil that help us grow. Okay, without sounding too philosophical, but they are soil. We need to, there's a reason we're feeling this emotion and it's absolutely fine that you feel it. So um, it is- I love that, topic. Sam. I love that. I think that's such the a- The wise man, thing, the wise man, good old Sam. But it's such a powerful so, thing because I think there's that, <laughs> there can be that element sometimes of people going, this is wrong, I shouldn't feel like this, which sets you back even further from where you probably want to go. Whereas if it can be that, well, all emotions have something that will will and can support us if we're willing to ha willing to embrace it like that. Because I, I think you're right. So, you know, the, the energy that we can feel with fear, like we don't have fight, flight or freeze for no reason. Like we haven't been designed that way for no reason. It's not a, a, a you know, I need my money Part back. Of growth. It's yeah, growth. exactly. It's not. It's yeah. not a. It's not a. Um, I don't know. I can think of a cliche thing, but it slipped out of my mind. But. There's a good comment from Rocco here, and I think that uh, makes absolute sense. Mechanism to protect yourself. Use it wisely. This is how we evolve. Totally. I've just noticed. Actually, we've got Anne here. Sorry. Um, uh, we should get her on. We, we've been talking to her. If she wants to jump on, send us a message on the comments. We'll send you the uh, the link before we yeah, wrap we're up. She says, she says, one thing I would like to share is that uh, every fear, uh, every fear or negative emotion also has a positive power embedded within it. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. That's that's. I just wanted to build on that, if I may. Um, you're right on, um, and you're right on. Thanks for joining us. I know you came in late. We're going to be wrapping up. Unfortunately, a little bit soon, but um, you're, I agree with you 100%. There has to be some reason why that emotion has entered our, you know, our, our consciousness. I think maybe we sh if she wants to jump on, Sam, we can get her on for a quick five minutes. Uh, if she wants to jump on, we'll, we'll send the link. I'll put the link in the, um, in the okay. uh, comment section. She wants to up. jump on. Before We're slowly we wrapping up. Rich, sorry, mate. We're sorry uh, because we've got to ask people for some questions uh, on what the topic is next week. So that's going to give yeah. us about four minutes. So I'm not sure we'll have time, or at least I don't personally. I, I do need to jump off, but um, yeah, yeah. I'm going to put it in here, and then anyway, go ahead, Sam. So let's let's. Uh, there's been some uh, some comments here for next week. I think there's a comment from Gina about addictions. It's an interesting one. Um, yeah. Or how to cross the line for change, which is interesting also. Let me just put you in the big box, Mr. Sam Eid. And you can say the word Carlton because I love the way you say Carlton. Please say it. Carlton. This week. Carlton. Yes. <laughs> I love it. You're rooting for Carlton. Come on, Carlton. <laughs> rooting. <laughs> barracking. Let's go with barracking. You've got to say barracking. You've got to say barracking. <laughs> we don't say bar barracking. That sounds like yeah. barricade. What does that mean? <laughs> the same thing well, just as means what you like... guys think reading means, but that's not what we think it means. <laughs> <laughs> Are you root, root for Carlton, Andrea? Carlton. Okay. Guys. <laughs> we'll give you the Aussie definition off, off, offline and you'll probably... <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I do know that you're going to get a Carlton membership, by the way, right. because I, I believe Lana's going to get you a, a Carlton membership. We've, we've made you Carlton for life. Oh, okay. nice one. The Dublues. <laughs> Not the yeah, the blues. Blues. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's let's wrap up. I put I put the thing in there. Um, let's talk about next week's um, uh, yeah. topic. Uh, let's you know, see what. Uh, cool. Huh. Addiction. Addictions is cool. Andrea, what do you think about addictions? Yeah, we'll I'm that. open to, yeah, we we did a little bit, I think we touched a little bit in terms of uh, like being addicted mm. to drama last week and I, mm. I, I think the, the core of things really, whether you're addicted to substance, whether you're addicted to, you know, anything, I think I, I think it'll boil down into the same pot really. So, but I'm cool, I'm, I'm cool to go with anything. I, I speak with a mouthful of marbles underwater. <laughs> yeah. Rich, what do you think rich what do you think rich i don't know if i'm gonna add like to be honest i mean addictions it's it's good but i'm not sure how much value it can add to that personally uh with addiction you know yeah, we, um we covered it recently like andrea is saying we did cover 
uh, addiction to some form. I think form. we covered what we can cover. Like, let's be honest, addictions, if, we, if we're really going into certain addictions, like that's out of our territory, like that that needs, you know, medical support and stuff. So it, it's pretty broad, but it could take you into territory that I wouldn't be necessarily comfortable with if I'm 100% honest. So, yep. Yeah. You know, fair enough. Well, we could we could brainstorm of something else, or let's see, maybe the guys will put some uh, uh, another topic that maybe we can tackle. I'm interested to also put CSBR in in um, which we, is we what covered, we we covered that, Rich. If you remember, I think it was the very first show, the first episode. You know, I know, I know, we covered it, but I was just thinking that perhaps that we can we can reinforce how the importance of that model. And how that makes change so by understanding your conditioning you know what i mean mm. Mm. well we could yeah, let's let's yeah. um, let's agree on the next on next week's topic before we jump off so guys in the comments uh please listen i mean addictions i think we covered it well i think we'll pay that a visit perhaps sometime in the future but uh, for now i think i think we you know touched on it previous on previous episodes so Give us some some topics, otherwise we'll come up with our own. And when we do, it's gonna be juicy. <laughs> Can I? Is it okay if I throw one out there? Just food. For yeah, me? go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Well, you know, we're focused on what are your fears and addicted to drama and stuff, which is all like if you want to have the the polarity of positive and negative. Maybe we get to talk about what some of our greatest achievements and tap into the energy that we felt when we experienced that because that allows us to draw. Like reality is that's what you want to tap into is the energy that you want to feel when you when to do these things and let's focus on that and let's remember what that thing felt like or how we achieved that and reflect on the, the positive. All right. Agreed, agreed. I like that. Totally. I, I like it. Totally, totally with you. Let's switch gears. So, what do we call it? The, the best, the best achievements. Your best achievements, and how that felt. Or something how are like you that. a kick-ass human? <laughs> okay, okay. I, don't know. I like it. <laughs> but yeah, like. Do you, you want to write that? Yeah, down? Like Rich, you want to write that down? So yeah. So tell me what it is. So it's uh, how are you a kick-ass? <laughs> They were saying oh, no. American in your accent, no. right? Kick ass individual. Yeah, let's do let's do positivity. Mm. Yeah, kick ass. Yeah. I I don't know. Oh, Maybe Alana, we'll to... I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge Alana. She said shit. Mm. That's hard. I'm assuming in terms of like maybe reflecting on that, but I'm gonna challenge you, Alana. You've got a week. If you're finding this challenging, you've got a week to really sit with. What is the thing in my life that I am most proud of? Yeah. And maybe you won't come up with anything. That's totally fine. That's cool. But she's a very special woman, by the way. Very yeah. special woman. So she's got a lot of positive yeah. things. That's a good one. Anne actually posted something really cool. Yeah. What are your unique powers? That, that's a good that's one. it. No, let's do that. What are unique <laughs> powers? Sorry, Lana. I'm gonna the 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 question. Sorry, I'm having this conversation with Lana because I can see the comments. But your thing before was how to change your mindset. You just worked out how you can. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. (laughs) Very good. All right. So I think we I think we stick to what are your unique powers. Um, If you all agree to that, and give us the thumbs up in the comments and stuff, we do that. Let's let's. that means though, let's right? work that means, what that means Anne has to that means Anne has to join us for that episode right then I want Anne to come in and say hello just a hi quick hello because I haven't seen her and um she wants to jump on and say quick hello before we wrap up and it'll be good for the audience to to try logging I think she tried logging on but you put it in the uh, chat box uh, yeah. but she lost, she lost us yeah yeah oh so, she's a technophobe she what, says. Is, what are your unique what are your unique powers? That's awesome. Okay, that that's really cool. So I, I love how you switch gears with that, Andrea. Yeah, um, let's go with the the positives here and build on that achievement. Perhaps even some decision making. You know how to make great decisions. Oh, that's another topic. That's that's. I think that's different. 
Yeah. Okay. So it's different. Yeah, I think I think this one is what is your unique or what is your superpower? Okay. Okay. Cool. Now she's Great gonna stuff. try cool. and jump in. She's gonna try yeah, and jump in just to say a quick hello. I've sent the link. All she needs to do is to jump on that StreamYard link that I put in the comments. And she presses is that. There something, she can, is there something like a quick hello, Rash? Like, is there something like a quick hello? <laughs> not in this, not in here, there's not. Come on, Rash. Yes, Come on, Rash. Come on, Rash. <laughs> Come on, Rash. All right, cool. All right. Listen, so please, guys, I'm just going to fast track this. I literally need to jump off. If you guys want to continue, let me know now. Um, I think we had a great session. We talked about fear. Fear is a very broad topic. Um, but for this episode of The Hit Show, Human Investment Technology, please like, share, subscribe to this channel, and, and share it with your friends. I, I notice there's quite a few people. It's increasing week by week. I really appreciate you joining, that we could give what we know and perhaps help you in so many ways um, that we would be delighted to. So we're very happy, especially during this time, that we're sharing this information with you. Um, you know, people like Andrea, Rash, myself, like this is, we find this really enjoyable. Like this is really great. Instead of talking just amongst ourselves, let's open it up and touch people uh, far and wide. So please look, hit subscribe to this channel, share it. I really enjoyed the session, guys. Any final words from you, Andrea? Uh, hopefully catch you next week. You know that sometimes, like today, uh, things um, things unfortunately got in the way. But yeah, I I love this. I think it, it's obvious that you know we we love being able to support people to be the best version of themselves, and that best version is whatever they believe is their best version. And it's just, I mean, this is the way that humanity changes and evolves. Like what was said before, you know, it's just being able to hold that space. So, you know, thank you. It's a privilege to be here. It is a privilege. And I don't say that lightly. I, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. It is a privilege to be with people that are willing to, you know, really come in here and support us, but support themselves. And there's that, you know, that unison of energy that goes around. So I feel good. You feel good. I feel good because you feel good sort of thing. So, yeah. That's why there's never a quick hello, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Look. On that hello, Anne, Anne is a bit of a tech dinosaur. Uh, just for next time, uh, what we need to do, Anne, is you need to get onto Chrome, copy that link, and you'll get in. So just copy and paste and put it into Chrome if you've got Chrome, because sometimes Safari doesn't work. So just thought I'd you know, put it out there. Big thanks to Lana. She told everyone on the, the Blues Abroad, I was on the show yesterday, can't show, and she told everyone to, to jump on. So that's why we've had uh, overwhelming support today. Which is really, really appreciated. Uh, love, love the guys that keep on tuning in and and like what Sam was saying. Like, share. Just these types of stories. You know, we might be able just to help someone with with the story that we tell from from our experience of coaching or guiding people into you know helping them transform. And it just might just help someone. That that that's the whole reason for sharing to get the word out there. So no, from me, all is good, man. And go the blues. So uh, <laughs> I have to always yeah, throw it in, and and you know. I think so, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna say that I'm gonna become a Collingwood supporter just to rattle your cage. See how you no, you, you, <laughs> you you're going to get. In, I've got the Pom man. He's in the comments too. He will go absolutely nuts on you. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, you, you it's very time part time. of this show is that everyone and say the word, uh, Sam, because we love the way you say it, the American accent. Say the word, the C word, Carlton. That's right, <laughs> right. Hello. So the whole group Hello. is all Carlton, all the baggers. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the rest of hey, the week. Take care of yourself. We'll see you next week. Signing out on the hit show. Goodbye. Thanks, guys. See ya. Bye.